Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and I'm back with four more spring and Easter DIYs for you today. We're going to be working with chalk couture. I receive a kit each month in the mail for $21. So we're going to take the long way home. This is the one we're going to be using and I think it's really cute and it came out really cute. Um, so along with that, I'm going to be using my Sharpie markers and I also have some Waverly Antique Wax, some Swan by Hello Hobby, wood glue, um, a white paint marker, one of the bicycles from Hello from Hobby Lobby's wood pile. <laughs> I have two paint stir sticks and two wood plaques or planks from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to start out by staining these two um, paint stir sticks and then setting them aside. Then I'm going to wood glue and hot glue these two planks together and go in with some Dollar Tree spackle and fill in that center piece because whenever you use um, hot glue, it does expand. So it's hard to get everything just really tight together, glued together. So there's a little line there and I'm just going to fill it in and sand it down and it's going to be fine. So thank you everybody for joining me today for this DIY. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. It's free and you're not going to want to miss out on another cute and crafty DIY with D. Also, don't forget to hit your notification bell so that you never miss out. And for everyone who's been here with me before, I thank you for coming back. You guys are awesome, and I love having you here. So as I was saying about the chalk couture, Robin over at Crafts Unleashed is my chalk couture representative. I signed up on her website, and she is my go-to person for any questions or anything that I may need to know about chalk couture. So I will have her link in the description box below in case you would like to sign up for Chalk Couture as well. Again, it is a monthly subscription, $21 a month, and they send you these little goodies. It's a surprise every time you get it because you don't know what they're going to send, but I'm sure you're going to love it because I love mine so far. So I went back in with my white chalk paint, Swan by Hello Hobby, and I painted that, that plaque or sign, and then I got my... Um, I didn't, do, did I glue my stir sticks down yet? I was so busy talking, I don't even know. Lord, <laughs> sorry, you guys, I'm a little bit distracted. Anyway, if I didn't glue them down, I'm going to glue them down. And I'm also going to staple them to make sure everything stays in place. But I do know that I only want to paint where the stencil is going to go, where I'm going to glue those two paint stir sticks. Nope, I didn't do it already. Where I'm going to glue those two paint stir sticks, I don't want any paint. They don't stick really well when you put um, paint underneath something you're going to glue. It just, it sticks to the paint, but it doesn't actually stick to the wood. So then it comes up easy. So I try not to paint wherever I'm going to add a glued um, piece of wood or something like that. So I had a hard time trying to cut those with my X-Acto knife. So I had to pull out the miter box saw, you guys. Normally, I can cut the paint stir sticks with an X-Acto, but I think because I stained them first, something about that stain had those sticks real strong, and I could not cut through them. So, I had to break out the miter box saw. It's all good. It's all done. Trimmed them up, sanded them down, and we are ready to apply. Using wood glue and hot glue and staples, we're going to get these two paint stir sticks adhered to the top and bottom of this side. Again, I really love how this turned out. It is not my favorite. It is cute, but not my favorite. If you want to know what my favorite is, you got to keep watching. So I am going to go in with my Waverly. Nope, I'm going in with Apple Barrel. My Apple Barrel acrylic paint in the color uh, Chocolate Bar. And I'm just going to cover those staples up. Just going to set that aside and I'm going to break out my chamois from the Dollar Tree and we're going to fuzz this silk transfer. Yes, we're going to fuzz it. I don't have my fuzzer apparently handy right now. Um, it's in my cart on the Chalk Couture site. I have not ordered it yet. It's just sitting, hanging out in the cart. But in the meantime, you can definitely use the chamois from Dollar Tree. It worked just fine. It worked very well, actually. So 
not too worried about that. You have to fuzz to make sure that the transfer is not so sticky that it pulls your paint up. So I'm going to get that placed where I want it. And I'm using the chalk paste in the color Ocean. And I am going to apply it quickly because you don't want it to dry. If it dries and then you pull your silk transfer up, you're going to pull your paint up. The paint's just going to adhere to the back of the transfer and not to the wood. So you have to pull it up while it's still wet. And I'm only applying it where I need it. I'm not going to put it at the top where the bike is because we're going to put our wood bike on. And that's going to give us that 3D look that I want, give it some dimension. So that's why I only applied paste where I wanted it and actually got it in more places than I wanted it. So I'm going in with a baby wipe and I'm just going to clean it up. And then I'll go back in with my paintbrush and my Hello Hobby chalk paint in the color White Swan. And we'll clean it up a little bit more by just painting where the blue is that I don't want. Just cleaning it up, making it nice and neat, as neat as I can get it. And then I'm gonna use, yeah, that came out weird. And then I'm going to use, ran that whole sentence together. <laughs> you guys know this mouth, it don't always work the way I want it to. My head tells it to do something and then it does what it wants. Then I'm going to use, my hot glue and my wood glue <laughs> to get this bike glued down. And I'm going to apply some little bitty pink flowers. I'm going to put those in the basket. You can't have an empty basket. It screams flowers. So I have these little scrap pieces of florals. All crafters do. We have a, a bag, a box, a bucket, a basket, a bowl, something full of scrap, scrap florals. So I just reached into my little bag and pulled out these little pink flowers and we're going to just cut those apart and glue them to the basket. I'm going to apply a jute cord to the back of the sign and this one is going to be done. And here's the finished DIY you guys. I hope you like it as much as I do. I think it came out really nice. Moving on to DIY number two, we are going to do a bird's nest. I am using my Hello Hobby chalk paint in the color Aqua, my Deco Art Americana in the color Golden Straw. I have a white um, paint marker from Dollar Tree, my Ultra Fine Sharpies from Dollar Tree as well. I have some eggs that I got from Michael's and I have the top to one of the birthday boxes from Dollar Tree. I have some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree, and then I just have some packing paper. That came with something that I ordered from Amazon, and I'm using some of these some of these wood pieces from the wood pile at Hello Hobby. They were $2.99, and I got them for half off, so they were $1.50. I am going in with this brown paper for two reasons. One, it keeps me from having to use three or four coats of paint on this lid. And two, it adds texture to the lid so that I don't have to use a ton of moss to create the texture that this paper is going to give me. So it's a win-win. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I also have four chunky beads. I'm going to add some little feet to the bottom of this bird's nest because I want it to stand up a little bit. And again, I like to add my um, glued pieces on straight to the product or piece that I'm um, working on. Like I don't want to add them to the, the paper bag because if the paper bag pulls up or that brown paper pulls up, your beads fall off. So the beads actually need to be directly on the lid. So that's why this looks the way it looks. And then I thought, okay, I still want to cover the back of this box and I don't want to have to paint it. So I got to get some paper bag or some 
you know, craft paper, whatever you want to call it, back here somehow. And I tried to cut little holes in the round and then tuck it down. It didn't work. You guys saw it. It was a mess. So plan B, we're just going to glue some paper down any kind of way we can. <laughs> yep, that's what we're doing. Because I want to cover it up, but I didn't want to have to put the beads on the paper. I want the beads directly on the box. So it looks a little messy, but that's okay. Bird houses are messy. They're organic. They're natural. It's not precise it's not even it's not perfect and that's what makes it very pretty and very very natural so that's what we're going to do now i'm just going to glue this moss onto that brown packing paper with some hot glue be very careful i should have my finger protectors on but you know i'm a rebel i just go in hot <laughs> i did okay i didn't really burn myself so there you go I'm just giving this birdhouse a little trim, not too much because we want it to look organic. That's my word for this birdhouse, organic. Just trimming it up a little bit. And in that bag of moss, there were some little twigs. So when, when I'm using those twigs along with this little twig that came with the wood pile pack. And I'm just going in with my Dollar Tree paint marker or furniture marker actually, and it is the color cherry. And I took my exacto knife and I punched a hole in the side of that uh, lid and I tucked that branch in there. And then I'm going to add those other branches that came with the moss. I was so happy that those were in there. I'm like, ooh, I got some freebies. So we're just gonna get those glued down Give the bird something to perch on. How cute is that going to be? Yes, this one is my number one. This is my favorite DIY out of the four that I'm showing you today. The bird's nest for the win. So now I took one of the birds and I penciled in um, the markings of where I want his colors to go. I want the golden straw on his belly and on the crown of his head. And then I want the aqua blue for the rest of the body for like his back. And then I'm going to take that white paint marker and just give him that little white stripe on his head. You guys, looking back at this, once I got everything in place and I was done with this DIY, I thought, you got to go back and paint the other side of the bird. This is a circular DIY. You can see it from all angles, all the way around. And I realized that and I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so I did go back and paint the back of the bird the same way I painted the front, just because it can be seen from all sides. So it gives it a nice cohesive look. I've added my eggs, and these eggs are so cute. I got them from Michael's. I didn't have to do anything to them. They're already soft and muted and matte colored with the um, speckles on them already, so they were perfect for this DIY. And I'm just going in with some of the greenery from Michael's as well. They had their greenery on sale, 50% off. So I picked up these little uh, yellow flowers, and I also picked up a bunch of the purple ones. So... I'm using the yellow for this DIY and I'm just adding them to the branches because I think it looks super sweet. Just cute little adorable flowers. And this is going to be it for this DIY. So you guys, yes, remember to paint your bird on both sides before you glue it down. 
It's not easy to paint after it's glued down. Here's the finished DIY. DIY number two. It's my favorite. Moving on to DIY number three, and we're going to make a spring sign. This is so simple and so much fun to do. I really enjoy making, um, I said a spring sign, wreaths. I really enjoy making wreaths. So I picked up these beautiful, soft, I don't know, blush pink kind of peachy colored cabbage roses from Joanne Fabrics. I got some white baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. I have this 14 inch wreath brown from the Dollar Tree some paddle wire, Dollar Tree, various pieces of scrap ribbon that I just had laying around. And I have this welcome spring sign from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to start off by just cutting the flowers off of the sign. We're going to put those two pieces aside because I've got another DIY in mind for that. And then I just cut the corners off of the sign just to give it some interest. And I sanded them down and I sanded all the glitter off the sign. And I thought I was going to go in with my Sharpies because I have that green color and that peach color. But after I sanded the glitter off, it looked nice and old and weathered and I liked it better. So I left it that way and I did not use my Sharpies. I sanded down the edges, just distressing them a little bit all the way around the sign. And I'm going to set that aside. I found this beautiful birch look ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I picked up two rolls of it and then immediately kicked myself and wished I'd picked up two more. But I'm going to use this and I don't know, I think it's 18 feet. I'm, I don't know if it's 18 feet. It's got to be 18 feet, 8 feet, something like that. It was quite a bit of ribbon on that roll. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, it was 18 feet. 18 feet of ribbon on that roll, but it's very papery. It feels like paper. So I was very careful when I wrapped it around the wreath form and it didn't cover the entire wreath form. But as you can see, that's not an issue because we're going to use that sign. If you don't want to use the sign, you could use a bow, you could use flowers, whatever you need to do to cover that small spot. It's not going to matter. So now that I've got it all wrapped up, I'm measuring where I want it to sit so I know where to put the holes in the sign, just marking it with the pencil because I'm going to attach it with the paddle wire. I don't want to risk using glue for a sign this big because it could just fall off. And the ribbon, like I said, is not really ribbon. It's kind of papery. And so I want to make sure that the sign stays on the wreath. So I'm going to attach it with paddle wire. So I poked holes using my awl. Thank you to the wonderful um, family member that uh, told me it was an awl. I thought it was. A matter of fact, I, I said this pointy thing that I'm using, I think it's called an awl. And she did comment and tell me, yes, it's an awl. So thank you for that. I used that to poke holes in the MDF sign and through the ribbon to the, um, the wreath form. And then I just stuck my paddle wire through and attached it that way. Now I'm just placing down the cabbage roses and I'm looking to see where I want them to sit. I'm cutting them down a little bit more, just getting the placement of where they're going to go. And then I will get these attached as well. For the cabbage roses, I'm just going to add some hot glue to the stems and then I am going to push the cabbage roses between the layers of ribbon. I used five of the cabbage roses. I like using odd numbers. They just seem to look better on DIYs. There were seven of them, so I have two left over to be used on another project. I'm 
I'm just adding some hot glue to the leaves to help these stay in place. And now that I've got all the cabbage roses where I want them and I've got my sign attached, I'm going to take my scrap ribbon and I got the pink burlap from Dollar Tree and I got the um, mint polka dot from Joann's, I think. Either Joann's or Walmart. So I'm just going to make a bow. I'm using my Olivia bow method, just making my loops, making my tails, pinching it together, and tying it off. Simple and easy, and it's always cute. Now that I've got my bow all fluffed up and ready to go, I am simply going to tie this bow to the wreath form. I'm not going to hot glue it at all because I can untie it and reuse it on another project if I want to later. Doing a little more fluffing and then I'm going to take some of the leftover leaves from the cabbage roses and I'm going to glue those around the bow. Anywhere I feel that there's a hole or a spot that could use a little greenery, I'm just going to place one of the leaves there. going to add a jute cord to the back of this and we're going to call this one done. How cute is that? And here's DIY number three, you guys. I absolutely love it. If you guys see this birch look ribbon at your Dollar Tree, be sure to pick some up. But be careful using it because it is very paper thin. The texture is just different, but it's very pretty. Moving on to DIY number four. The final DIY for this video today is a sweet, adorable little Easter basket for my granddaughter. So I have one of the birthday boxes. I have these juncture earmuffs, some various ribbons, some raffia, and I also have a leftover scrap piece of this wallpaper paper, this self-adhering wallpaper paper. So I'm just going to take that and trim it down to size and wrap it around the box to keep from painting the box. Plus, I love this wood look for this basket. This one's very easy. If you blink, you're going to miss it. It's going to come together so quickly. I loved putting this together for my granddaughter. I really did. She's very crafty herself. She loves to draw. So she definitely will appreciate this homemade basket from her Nana. So now that I've got that all adhered, I'm just making little slits in the bottom of that paper so that I can wrap it or fold it over the bottom of the container of this round container. And now I'm taking some of this egg ribbon that I picked up from Walmart. And I'm just going to wrap it around this container. Adding the glue to the ribbon because it gives me more control. Or at least I feel like it does. As opposed to adding it to the container. 
And now that I have it all wrapped around, I'm going to go back with the same ribbon and I'm going to make a bow. I also picked up some of this carrot ribbon from Joanne Fabrics and I'm going to use that as well. Now that I've got my bow loops and my tails all made, same process as always, pinch everything together and tie it off. It can't get any easier than this. This is the simplest way that I know how to make a bow. Other than a messy bow, this is the simplest way that I know how to make a bow. And we're just going to fan everything out or fluff it, make it nice and pretty, and attach it to this cylinder or container, whatever you want to call it. We're going to attach it at the points where the bow joint or the um, ribbon joint together from wrapping it around. We're going to add it right there. And these earmuffs are so adorable. I picked these up probably a year ago from Dollar Tree. I didn't know what I'd do with them, but I knew I'd save them for Easter at some point because they're bunnies. And these are the Juncture brand. So I picked these up and I have not seen these out this year. And this is going to be the handle for our Easter basket. Just going to get those glued down. I'm going to add some of this raffia to the Easter basket. I didn't have any Easter grass and I didn't want to use any type of moss because I am going to be putting her candy in here. Even though it's packaged, it's not unopened. That moss is just messy. It has a weird smell to it. and I, I, There's no way I would put that in her basket. So because I didn't have any Easter grass, I knew the raffia was all natural and the best way to go. How cute is that? All right, you guys, here's a final look at all four DIYs. As always, please comment down below. Let me know which one's your favorite. If you have made it to this far in the video, please let me know you stuck out, hung out, and stuck it through. <laughs> all four DIYs with me today um, by giving me a basket emoji. And if you don't have a basket emoji, just type in the word basket. Let me know you were here. I love you guys so much, and I thank you. You are such a blessing to my life and to my channel. Please tell your family and friends about these Cute and Crafty so they can stop by and enjoy some of these crafts with me as well. If you're new to my channel and you don't know, I also have a private Facebook group, and it is free. These Cute and Crafty DIY Divas. If you are a crafter but don't have a YouTube channel and you'd like to share your beautiful crafts with us, please go over there ask to join and admin will let you in and you can post your beautiful DIYs there. I just want to say thank you again for hanging out with me today. Be blessed. Stay safe. Craft something beautiful today, you guys. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.